Everyone, this will be our advanced skills for how to operate a backhoe loader. This video is sponsored by Ariat. Without sponsors like that, we wouldn't be able to provide you great content like this. So please go support them. Check this out. This video we're going to cover advanced skills so it's kind of just the next step up from basic controls if you haven't seen that portion already I encourage you to watch that because we're not going to go over a lot of the basic controls now for the beginning here the first thing we're going to go over is basically center of gravity uh, a, a backhoe loader they're they're very unstable machines so you've got a large tool hanging off the back um, again, a smaller front wheelbase there. So these machines, you can get a lot of trouble fairly quickly. So it is very, very, very important to understand center of gravity. So with that said, we're going to go over a few different things here. Uh, first is it's going to be driving uh, with center of gravity. I already kind of went over, we don't want to be up high when we're fully loaded. So I went over that in the first with basic controls when we're fully loaded on a bucket. The other is just driving on a slope or going up or down a slope. So in general, when we're approaching a slope, you don't ever want to go up at an angle. So I got a, and again, the site I'm at, I don't have some huge location, uh, but what I can show you is I'm approaching this slope right now, and you don't ever want to go up at anything that wouldn't be straight up and down. So like this, it'd be very easy for me to get in a very poor position. So anytime you're approaching a slope, you either want, you want to basically go perpendicular to it. So if I back up here, now the other piece to that though, you generally don't want to approach a steep slope and go up and forward just because uh, this is where the weight on a machine on a back of loader is on the back is most of it's in that tool. Depending on what accessory you have up front, if you just have an empty bucket, there's not a lot of weight uh, pulling that down. So you'll see if I try and go up this hill right now, you see how quickly it'd be really easy for me if I keep going and especially a steeper that this machine could tip over. Now generally it's going to fall back onto the uh, base of the backhoe there but it wouldn't be good. So in general what you're going to want to do if it's a steep slope that you're trying to go up with a backhoe loader. So I always recommend going up in reverse. You got way more weight in the back. And plus you've got the backhoe or the bucket portion up front. So with this, it's a lot easier to go up in reverse. So depending on the slope on what you're going up, it's a lot easier to go up. Plus I would have my bucket here in front to catch myself. But again, there's really no way you're gonna go up that way. So the best way is always you wanna try and go up in reverse. Now, the other portion is digging on a slope. Obviously, in an ideal situation, you want to have your, uh, you want to be flat on the ground and have a stable base, but that's not always how it's going to be. So if you are, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this machine at the base of this berm. Again, this is where you want to be extremely careful. We're bringing it in to get set. So straighten it out put it in neutral. And then what we want to do is set that bucket flat on the ground. You don't want to raise up that front end at all. Uh, you just want to set it there, neutral, and then park. And then we'll flip around to the back side. Okay, so now being uh, set up on an angle here. I'm... So first things first, obviously make sure your seatbelt's on. If I didn't go over that in the beginning, especially when you're on a slope, we should be doing anyways. And then I'm bringing these in. Again, I'm not going to go over. We already went over basic controls here. Now, the key on a slope is always lowering your uh, downhill one first. So I'm going to put that down right above the ground. And then my top side, I'm just going to get it where it's barely touching the ground because this is going to eventually, if not even a little bit above. And then all you're doing, you are going to have to have full throttle because you're going to need more power to raise this up. And then I'm just pushing that up. And then that's as far as that'll go. And then bringing that down, just making sure it's stable. So then I'm more at an angle there. It's a lot easier 
the machine's a lot more stable. And then the only other thing here is just when you are trenching on a slope, you never want to dump, i take one scoop here. As much as possible, you always want to dump your spoil pile on the uphill side. Couple reasons. Uh, one, it's more stable. So I'm just going towards that, I'm moving all my weight, my center of gravity over there. So it's a lot more stable. The other thing is if I'm going to the right at all, again, this is where the machine would be a lot easier to tip this thing over. So that's one as I'm dumping up there. The other piece to that is this is a lot easier to backfill. You're, uh, if you're about two to three feet up the hill, it's gonna be a lot easier to kind of pull that material down and in into the trench. So that's digging on a slope and then also where you're putting that material. We're gonna go ahead and pack this thing back up. And then whenever you're ready to come down from this, again, always lower your uphill side first. So bring that down. I still like to leave it above the ground just a little bit. And then I'm slowly bringing down the downhill side. And sometimes I'll actually leave these out a little bit depending on the slope if I want something. I'm not that worried about this slope I'm on right here. So all the way up and I'm gonna spin this back around. Okay, I'm spinning it back around to driving position. I'm slowly pulling back, getting that bucket off the ground. Again, always keeping low and tight as you possible. Parking brake off, and then gently drive off of this. Okay, and that's digging on a slope. Okay, we're gonna drive over another area. We're gonna do some trenching while we're driving over there. Again, this video is sponsored by Ariat. We wouldn't be able to provide this content without them. So check out this message from them. Again, thanks to Ariat for sponsoring this video. Um, now I've already spun around, I'm ready. The rest of this I wanna go over a little is entrenching. So uh, the first thing I wanna show you is still going on center of gravity. Uh, you really want to make sure you're as low and stable to the ground as you can. So the only thing, the other piece I'll show you is I've already got my outriggers down. You do not want to look like this. So as high, some people take the wheels off the ground, which is fine. I don't think there's a right or wrong strategy on that. But understand the higher you go, the less stable your machine is. So you generally want to keep. So I always just touch the ground. So let me get these. So right now I'm off the ground. I'm just touching each. And I'm just feeling it just so it's a little bit off. That also is putting a little bit of downward pressure on my back. Um, but that's all you want to do. Don't go too high. Again, center of gravity, it's always an issue with these. So, okay. I've already unlocked it. Uh, again, a couple things I want to go over for trenching. Uh, one of the exercises. I'm going to extend. This is extended how we went over in the first uh, video there. If you seen, didn't see basic controls, it's a foot pedal here that I'm using. A um, couple things I recommend. I call, there's an exercise called raking. The only way to get really good at trenching is to be able to control that bucket. So what I recommend is finding an area where you can get flat to the ground, get your teeth barely in, and then practicing if you can control the teeth in the ground, keep them touching the ground, but also don't keep, or don't let that bucket, the bottom of the bucket touch the ground. So as I get to the end here, the only thing I like to show people is I've got that boom all the way up. This is the only issue. When I'm trenching, I don't like to manipulate the extend a hoe arm. So this is about how close I can get. And I'll show you on this handheld again, using this, if you can't see. Now there is, if you did, so if I pull this up, let me just show you the difference. Cause if I pull that up and I can go down even lower, I want to show you how much further I can come in. I'm still doing the raking. That's all I get. I get like another six to inches to 12. So that's why I recommend, I really consider the extend hole portion more for transport because it can actually collapse it all in. Uh, I usually just leave it out all the way. Now the raking again is really valuable to practice. If you get good at this, this is how you're gonna do a, uh, get, get a flat trench. The other method, 
sometimes doing this at idle. If you're a newer operator, lowering that throttle so it's not nearly as jerky, just do find a piece of property that you can just, ugh, I'm not as good at idle. If you can find an area where you can do that, it's a combination of opening the bucket, and I actually look, look worse at idle, but. This is what you wanna to practice to get good at. This is the only way you're gonna get good at trenching, is being good at being able to control that bucket. So, I'm gonna throw it all back up. Now, generally trenching, you're gonna start out as far away. I like to be, usually wanna be in line with the machine, because I'm gonna show you later how to push this forward. Um, but this is the challenge of a backhoe, is looking over your side there to make sure, um, you know, basically seeing your arm. Now, in the first video, I might have showed you just going straight in and taking a big scoop. You don't do that. You, to do, it's good to practice, start one motion, but generally what you want to do is cut it at a 45, and you're basically trying to take off six inches to a foot at a time. So it's kind of that same raking exercise, but this time with ground edges and backing off a little bit if you can. And then your spoil pile should always be about two to three feet over. So people have asked me, how do you know how deep you're going? This is where I tell people, uh, well, one, if you have someone, you know, generally on a job site, they'll have someone actually reading grade on there. The other thing I like to do is if I know if I need a, I don't know, three foot trench, just know what your bucket uh, dimensions. Like I know this bucket, I, I've measured it. It's about three feet straight up and down like that. It's about two feet when I start going flat. So I can get a good judge on seeing how far the the bucket has basically flattened or gone into that hole. Trying to get everything to fall back in the trench so you don't have really dirty edges there. But the key here for trenching is really rolling that bucket and trying to get a nice flat bottom. So that means you want to use those teeth. They're, it's like a knife cutting in there. You're taking off six inches to a foot at a time and trying to get a nice flat bottom as much as you can, shaking the material off that falls into the bottom instead of coming up the sides. And just do one more here. And that's just ideally getting as close as you can. So I can see my whole bottom bucket, I'm probably about two feet here. So I'd continue doing this depending how deep the trench needs to go. Now, the only uh, kind of the trick on here is to, if we're trenching in a long line, I'm not completely done here, but I can still show. To move this machine, you don't necessarily have to spin it around. So if you just set your bucket where that boom is straight up and down, put a little bit of downward pressure, and then all you're doing is pulling those outriggers just a little bit off the ground. And then this is where you're taking your parking brake off. And then I just pull that bucket up just to here, making sure obviously your wheels are straight where you want to go. And then you're really just pushing yourself forward. Once you've done that, pick that up so you're not in the, you're not supporting yourself there anymore. Drop your bucket. Um, I usually have the parking brake on. Some people with different strategies. Some people won't have a parking brake on. Either way. Um, and then I put the outriggers back down, so I'm just barely off the ground, and then I'm right back to it. So that's an easy way if you're doing a long trench, is you can basically do, uh, move yourself in a long line just by pushing yourself out. You never have to spin the chair back around. Do one more here. Okay. Final piece, we're starting a little bit of backfilling. I showed you in the first, uh, the basic controls, you can backfill with the bucket here. Uh, if you do, you know, they don't, you generally don't like to use the side of the bucket. It's not great on the swing arm on these. Um, but either way, I'm gonna show you how to use the bucket. We're gonna, again, you always wanna make sure you're retracted all the way. I roll that bucket, usually when I'm out, spin this around, back in. And then same thing we've shown about locking that. This John Deere has that. And I'm locked in. I'm secure there. And then I'm pushing these away and then spinning back around. So back around, 
parking brake off, buckets off the ground, and then I'm good to go. Now backfilling with a backhoe, they're not great. I'll tell you right now, it's uh, not an easy machine to uh, backfill with, but I'm gonna go up and just do, for training purposes, get lined up straight, always having your nose pointed to where you wanna, where you're trying to push. And then this is where using, and again, if I use that camera, I know I said this on the other video, but understanding that top edge on the, your bucket, that is your blade angle. You can't see the front, obviously. So you wanna make sure that you're flat to the ground, bring it down, and just make sure you maintain that as flat as possible. And then you're just trying to drive through it and push that material in there. And then after that, you're raising it up. There is a feature on, I didn't show in the others, this disengages the throttle, or I'm sorry, the transmission. So if I hold that, I can give it gas and I can raise this up faster. So that little button, you gotta keep it held in, that'll disengage the transmission. So it's a handy little feature on there to put it in or out of neutral. And I try and overlap a little bit, getting down flat. And again, throttling it up. So typically then what I would do is I would go in a straight line the other way. And actually, you know what? I probably have enough material there. I'm gonna do it anyway. Again, we're doing this one a little bit faster. You just don't want to let your tire, front tire, go in that soft spot. So I'm trying to get my material further out past the trench, which it's not right now. But I'm going to do it this direction in a straight line. Going flat with it. And you're kind of straddling that trench anyways right now. And I know my, again, you can't see anything in these, so I know I'm gonna keep going forward just a little bit. And then I wanna try and keep that material beyond it. So then this is where I would just float that blade coming back, dropping that down with that edge, setting that like that, and then backing up. And eventually taking that out of float and letting it drive off. And I would do a few more passes on this, both sides, so. Okay, that's backfilling and uh, floating the blade there at the end. Always park this thing, put it neutral, flat on the ground, parking brake on. A lot of times you're gonna let them idle down for about 30 seconds to a minute, really depends. Seatbelt off. everyone so that's our advanced skills or basically next step up from our basic control review hope you enjoyed it if you have comments you know if you're an operator on these share tips or tricks you've learned and again big thanks to Ariat for sponsoring this video without sponsors like them supporting us we wouldn't be able to provide this great content so please support the people that support us thanks a lot